St. Joseph's. I'm the Reverend Mother Cassinda Ellis. St. Joseph's is an Episcopal church in the heart of Queens Village with a vibrant community dedicated to putting God's words into action. Our church community is a family that comes together every Sunday for worship and fellowship, which is why I am so happy that you could join us. Thank you, and please continue to follow us on our webpage or on Facebook. Amen. May be seated for the reading. 
Okay. Um, the first reading is taken from the Old Testament, 2 Kings 2, verses 1 through 2, and 6 through 14. When the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilead. Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them. As they both were standing by the Jordan, then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted you. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended into a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. He picked up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood on the bank of the Jordan. He took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water saying, where is the Lord, the God of Elijah? When he had struck the water, the water was parted to the one side and to the other, and Elisha went over. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This song is chapter of Psalm 77, verses 1 to 2 and 11 through 20. I will cry aloud to God. I will cry aloud and he will hear me. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? You are a God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The Lord saw you, O God. The Lord saw you and trembled. The very decks were shaken. The clouds poured out water, the skies thundered. Your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in your wings. Your lightning lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea, and your paths in great waters. Yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now and will be forever. Amen. The second reading is taken from Galatians chapter 5. For freedom Christ has set us free. 
Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you are called to freedom, brothers and sisters, but only to do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence. But through love become slavery, become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed by one another. Live by the Spirit, I say, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit, and what the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. Fornication, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these. I am warning you as I warned you before. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus said to him, 
No one who puts a hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Great. <laughs> so we have all of these young people here who 
we have nurtured and supported throughout the year and they are moving on to the next level. But I want to talk to you guys about today's gospel. In today's gospel, Jesus is doing his ministry, and he's moving from town to town. The first town they went to, um, they didn't really receive him, and the disciples got angry that the Samaritans, how dare they not receive Jesus Christ. And of course, two of his disciples were angry and wanted to do something about it. Have you guys ever had friends who, who wanted to protect you? Only two people here. Young people, I would start calling names if you don't answer in as, a, as a group. But have you ever had your friends want to protect you? Yes? No? I don't know. Parents, what's wrong with your children today? Are they up? Some of them were on the retreat. Some of them went to Lake Compounds yesterday, so they might be tired. You have had your friends want to protect you, right? Yes. I remember when I was in school and like things would happen and my friends kind of surrounded me. And so the same thing happened here with Jesus. Jesus went to the town of Samaritan and the, where the Samaritans were and they were not, Jesus was not received and their disciples were angry. Angry to the point where they said, let's, let's send consuming fire and burn down the place. Right? And, and those are the type of friends I want. I just want you to, talk, to tell you. <laughs> But Jesus says, no, that's not what we are here, and that's not what we're about. Let me just say something to you guys as friends, I mean, as, as young people. You need friends in your life that will go to the back for you. Quality friends, right, that will go to the back for you, not only because they love and care for you, but they will go to the back because they want to hold you accountable to your own actions, right? Sometimes our friends, they, friends that you have, they love us so much that they don't hold us accountable. So when you do something bad, they don't say anything really. But you want the friends that are going to tell you, you know what, Azaja, I don't like your attitude. But you can't be mean to the teacher like that. You can't be, uh, I'm just speaking about you because you're there. <laughs> <laughs> right? What? what did I do? But you also have to say when your friends are ready to go to fight for you, you might have to be like Jesus and say, hold on. It's not that serious. It's not that important, right? But then Jesus moves on to the next town and he goes and, and he goes to, he meets people along the way. And the people along the way are like people like us. And I like to say, these are the people with the great excuses in life. Um, people, how many of you have made excuses for why you cannot do something? Right? The reason why you can't go to church today, or you don't want to go to church today, right? Or, or the reason why you don't want to do your homework, right? When you have homework, or the reason why you just don't want to go to school. The biggest reason we don't want to go to school is because we're tired. School is boring. Church is boring too for some of us, right? You can be honest, you're on God's altar. No <laughs> lie. Right? But, but, but all of the people that Jesus encountered in the, in the last part of this gospel made excuses for why they couldn't do what God asked of them immediately. And in life, we, we, we are no different. God asks us to do things each and every day. I don't know about you, but when I was younger, my parents would go away. So like maybe when I was in high school, they would go away to do their Saturday, whatever they would do. But they would leave me home to do chores. I don't know. Do you guys get chores nowadays? I don't know. Parents, you get children chores? Yeah. You do not have chores? You do? What are your chores? You wash dishes. Mikey, you said you had a chore. What do you do? You don't do anything, you don't have chores? You got dishes, you got... Take care of your grandma. All right, that's a good chore. That's a great chore. All right, what about over here? What chores do you guys have? Any chores? Uh, Sandra, does Wyatt have a chore? What's your chore? Take it out the trash. Somebody was cooking over here. Whose job was it to cook? Oh, all three of you get to cook. Wonderful. That's good stuff. What, what else? What do you do? You cook what? You clean the house. You cook. You have a chore? What is that? You clean your room. That's good. I like to hear that. You know, having chores is a normal 
annoying, but it means it makes it makes a better person out of you. But when I was younger and my parents would leave me on Saturday mornings to clean the house, I, I procrastinated. Did anybody procrastinate here? I waited till the last minute. I would time from when they left the house until when I thought that they may come back. And, and so I was, maybe about an hour before I thought they should be coming back, I would start to clean. And my mom made me clean not only my room, but her room and the living room. That was my, my task. And so every, every Saturday, no matter what fail, I would never get the task done before she got home. Right? She would say, you better have this house clean by the time I get back. And every time I would make excuses as to why it wasn't the reason why it wasn't clean. Because I would say, Mom, the house is too big. Right? And you left me to clean it. And I don't have enough time. It was tiring. I would make all types of excuses. But the reality was that it wasn't too big a task. The reality was it wasn't too, too much to clean because it was the same cleaning day, uh, every week, right? It was the same cleaning that my mom had been doing before I was old enough to clean so she knew what it was. The reality was is that I didn't want to do it, right? The reality was I was being lazy and making excuses why I didn't want to clean. I would make excuses not only for cleaning but make excuses for why my homework wasn't done on time or make excuses for why I didn't study long enough. I would make excuses. And the people of the scripture today are also making excuses. And, it, and, and let me just say this, let me tell you a secret. It doesn't stop when you leave high school. Excuses follow us throughout our lives. And the challenge for us is, when are we going to decide to stop making the excuse? Right? God calls us at all ages. God speaks to us and tells us, be an acolyte, be a lay reader, be an usher, come to church and get involved in the leadership. God asks us to do visitations when we need to do visitations. God asks us to help out our friends and our buddies and makes all kinds of demands on us and we come back to God with all of our excuses. I don't have enough time, Lord. You only gave 24 hours. Now, if you had given 25, I would have done it. I don't have enough money. There's too many things that are already on my plate, Lord. We all make excuses. But Jesus says, when the young man says, Lord, I will follow you anywhere, but first, let me bury my dead. What does Jesus say? Let the dead bury the dead. That no matter what the excuse is, you are called to follow me, whatever I ask. And that we cannot allow our excuses to be the reason that we don't do. Eventually, my excuse for not doing my homework led me to getting a tutor. And my tutor said to me, you know this stuff, why are you wasting your parents' money? <laughs> Right? And, and once, I, once I realized that all I had to do was put a little bit of effort into the work that I was doing, school became a little bit different for me. I'm not saying that I was the A student, all right? I'm gonna tell you that much. I was not the A student in school. But I worked hard as if I was an A student. I stopped making the excuses so that I could get ahead. And the one thing that my goal was for every single school year was that I was not going to summer school, mm -hmm. right? And because of the threat of summer school and staying in summer, staying in school throughout the summer just didn't make sense to me, I worked extra hard to make sure that my grades were on point. I worked extra hard in 11th and 12th grade to make sure I could go to the college that I wanted to go to. So those of you who are in 12th and 11th grade or go in 10th grade, look, as soon as you hit 8th grade, you should be thinking about college, okay? You should be thinking about your future. Your future is out there for you, but you should be on the mode of, eventually, I want to do something with my life and work hard towards it. Whatever you decide to do when you get to college, make sure you do it with all of your heart and all of your abilities. And do not let the world give you the excuses 
Because in college, the excuse was, well, you know, I have the whole semester to get the work done. Right? And then I want to go to this party. I want to hang out with my friend. Don't worry about the children on the altars, young adults. Let, let them be. They're fidgety. It's OK. All right? There was excuses. There's going to be excuses in each area of our lives the more we move up. But Jesus says, if the dead can bury the dead, I still call you to do the work that is before you. I still call you to do your best in school. I still call you to do your best in college. I still call you to do your best at work, even when it's tiring, frustrating, and you need a raise. I still call you to do the work. In retirement, when you have all this time and you want to catch up on all the things that you didn't do when you were working, I still call you to do the work. The excuses are not enough in life. Summertime is here for you, and what are you guys going to do? Are you going to, anybody going camping? One person's going camping. Anybody doing anything fun this summer? No. This whole world just looks sad and pathetic. What's going on, What's going on here? They're like, there's the summer, they're not even excited at school that. You miss school. I love you. This young lady misses school. You have two months to just moan over it and then you'll be back. Okay? What are you doing fun this week? You're going to the beach? You're going to camp? You might go to Pennsylvania. What are you doing? You don't know. Yes. Anybody leaving the country? I know someone is leaving the country. Don't let me call out your name. I know who you are. Where are you going? Antigua. Are you going to bring Mother Dallas back some mangoes from Antigua? <laughs> you know how I always talk about the mangoes. But what are you going to do in Antigua? That's a good question. Let me tell you what you're going to do, parents and children. You're going to continue to learn in the summertime. It's amazing to me that kids don't have real hardcore summer readings. Or do they? You guys have summer readings? Yes. Oh, so now we're talking. When I say, what's summer reading? How many do you have to read? Three whole books. Can I tell you that when I was in school, I had to read eight by the time I got back to the, the school. Eight. And so now you have three whole books to read. And not only did I have to read them, I had to write reports on them. Do you have reports? Do you have tests when they come back? Yes. You look a little mad at that. <laughs> but they come in handy because if you take the regions, the English regions, you'll need to have some of these books in mind. So don't, don't, don't take them for granted. What about you guys over here? Do you guys have anything going on for school? Yes, sir. You're going to Las Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So where in Las Vegas are you going? Are you going to shows? You're going to shows. All right. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. Now we, we laugh because Las Vegas is a place where adults like to party and have fun and, and gamble. But you, you're not old enough. For it, so you get the other stuff. Stay hydrated in Las Vegas in the summertime. It's hot. All right. But we have all, what I'm getting at is that we have all these summer readings that the school puts on us. And if your school isn't, give, didn't give you any readings, continue to learn and explore your world in the summertime. Because keeping your mind going will help you out in school. Keeping your mind fresh on new things, on new ideas, whether we're in, T in Antigua or in Las Vegas, learning what's going on in other parts of the world, uh, of the country and of the world, is important for our development and our growth as people. Is that not right, adults over there? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Learning is an ongoing and lifelong thing. You may not be in, we might not be in school, but we're still learning. I don't know about the, the, the seasoned young people out here, but this seasoned person learns something new almost every single day. And, and, and for us, as technology is changing, we are definitely learning things new every single day. And I hope that the schools that, are, are, that are, you're going to are teaching you not for the jobs of today only, but of the jobs for tomorrow. Because you guys are living in a world that we are not, we, we didn't think or imagine, at least I didn't imagine, 
when I was younger. Right? The basic jobs of all I only knew when I was going to school was that either you were going to be a teacher, a nurse, a doctor, or a lawyer. We didn't know anything about IT or all those other uh, technological things that my cousin's doing at Google. He works for Google, and sometimes when he talks to me, it sounds like Google. <laughs> for those things. So when you're going to school, learn as much as you can and use the summer as an opportunity to explore new and fun things. Jason, as you are preparing for college, it will be exciting. It's exciting to go off to college. Finally, we get to go to the place where we, we've been seeing that it might be fun or, or have parties, but you're staying at home, so I don't know how much uh, your Aunt Corrine is going to let you party. <laughs> But, but this is new opportunities for you to go out and explore and to grow and not make excuses why you can't do. Use this time of your life to make mistakes when you still have mom and dad to protect you, right? Or you still have family to surround you. Use these opportunities to try new things and don't be afraid because you have all these people. You see those people out there? They will catch you. They will hold you accountable, but they will catch you. They might yell at you, but they will love you. So we'll off your journey. Don't make the excuses that the people in scripture are making this morning. If God calls you to be a better person, be the better person. If he calls you to help the stranger, help the stranger. If he calls you to be the friend where everybody else is being and yelling at the person or, or, or making fun of the person, be the person that stands in Christ's footstep and tells that person, I will work with you. I will journey with you. I will be your friend. Now, Mother Ellis knows that saying it and doing it are two different things, right? It's not always easy to be the friend of the person who is outcast when you yourself are just one inch away from being outcast. In school, in the school situation, right? I was not. The, I said I was not the A student. I was not the popular kid. I was the quiet, shy kid who, who at, from time to time would be bullied. But thank God I had my church home where people loved me and cared for me, and I knew that I was worthy, right? And so when people would say things about me, I didn't care because look, somebody loved me in this world, right? And the people out here love you. So no matter what society says to you, no matter what they, they, how much they distract you from your faith, stay firm in Christ. Do not make any excuses. When your professors in school look at you for your skin color and try to demote you, tell them, no, I have a church named St. Joseph's who knows that I am brilliant and smart, and if you mess with me, the whole church is coming after you. You understand me? All right, because this is a season where people will look at you for your skin color and for the fact that you are a young man and try to put you in a box that you do not belong. Know your worth. Every one of you in here, you are loved and cared for, so know your worth. And no, no matter what goes on, you can always come to Mother Ellis, and Mother Ellis will say whatever she has to say. She has to talk to your parents. She will talk to your parents. But I'm a tough cookie when certain things come. I will not allow you to make excuses for your life. Just like Jesus didn't allow his disciples to make excuses for theirs. If nothing else you remember this day, just remember that you're loved, you're cared for, and that this summer, have fun, enjoy, be safe, but come back next September ready to put your foot down and learn some more. Amen. Amen. We give you thanks, O oh God, that for freedom Christ has set us free. Though all things it challenges our patience, we also give you thanks for the freedom. Through love, to become servants of one another. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. Gracious God, give us the will and the strength to prepare the way for your kingdom to come. 
May love heal our factions and peace overcome strife. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. Your paths are in the great waters, mighty Redeemer. We, take, we thank you that by the waters of baptism, you have made us members of your household. The congregation may add their thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for all the young people of this church and young people everywhere. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. Lord Jesus, you rebuked your disciples James and John when they desired the destruction of others. Instill in us gentleness and self-control that we might learn to love even those who, with whom we strongly disagree. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. You are the God who works wonders. We offer to you our sincere prayers for our hurting loved ones. Work, with, work wonders in their hearts and lives, we pray. The congregation may add their position. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. By your strength, O oh God, you redeem your people. Lead us by your spirit and make us fit for your heavenly kingdom. We cry aloud to you. O oh God, hear us. O oh Lord, our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people and the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls. And to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved on you from our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors and ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may unite in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins to our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. So lift up your heart. We lift up your heart to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. The bread and wine used for the Blessed Eucharist are given in celebration of Norma and Errol Bible's wedding anniversary on June 27th, given by sons Hugh and Reginald and children Hakeem and Tori. May God continue to bless them with more years of love and happiness. The altar candles burn to the glory of the Almighty God in memory of Liber Faircloud, Sonny, who entered into eternal rest on June 20th. June 30th, 2018. One year sadly missed by wife Jean and daughter Ava. Mass on the Grass is scheduled for Sunday, June 7th at 9.30 a.m. July. Oh, July 7th at 9.30 a.m. 
Please join us for an outdoor mass followed by an international food festival. Team Lillian. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.